U.S. lawmakers want to break Google apart. OpenAI having possibly the worst week ever? And soon you can record your own podcast without recording your own podcast. This episode is packed to bursting, so let's get right into it. Google, you know the name. They've been one of the giants in the tech space since your dad got his first email address. Advertising, search, now AI. They're huge. So huge that the U.S. government has their eye on Google and saying, mm, you might have an illegal monopoly there, bud. Check out the clip. For technology companies, it comes down to vertical integration. They control more and more of the process, from hardware to software to services, so they don't need to rely on third parties. This makes a platform or an ecosystem that is hard for other smaller companies to actually break into. And for all of them, the age of generative AI is supercharging their ecosystems and positioning them as continued winners. At Google's annual hardware event, executives, they didn't even get to the new line of Pixel phones until 25 minutes into the keynote. That's because the event wasn't actually about hardware. It all amounted to even more integration, making Google too big to split. So some lawmakers in the US are saying that Google needs to be split up. The Google Chrome browser, spin it off. The Android operating system, spin it off. Even some of their AI businesses like DeepMind and Bard gotta divest. So a lot of people are saying that if this move takes place, it's gonna spark competition, but it also could risk a fragmented innovation ecosystem and uneven ethics oversight. But for business, it could mean more competition, uh, easier to get a foothold because you're not facing these monolithic mega corporations that have their finger into everything and squeeze out the competition. Either way, it's got a lot of opportunities and challenges, and we're going to follow the story for you. But in the meantime, check out the links, plural, on the Wednesday I page right now. From one giant tech monolith to another, we're talking about Amazon. They just unveiled their new AI model, Olympus, a generative AI model that processes text, images, and videos. They showed this off at the AWS reInvent conference this past week. Check out the clip. So obviously this is a huge move for Amazon and for the marketplace in general. For Amazon, they get to decrease their dependence on Anthropic. Although with their significant investments, it's, it's again, pretty clear that they still plan on nurturing that partnership. They now have their own in-house AI capabilities, though, which does a lot for their web service offerings as well. The AWS service offerings are a huge part of their business and the ability to have a native AI in that environment, a native AI suite of tools even, is pretty powerful. Olympus specializes in video analysis, is capable of identifying scenes or diagnosing technical issues in areas where high speed and highly adaptive responses are needed, like sports and media. So the project reduces the reliance on Anthropic's Claude AI while complementing Amazon's $8 billion investment in Anthropic, which is part of its broader AI push. So it's going to be integrated into AWS's bedrock and it positions Amazon to compete against OpenAI and Google. Big story. Get all the news on the Wednesday I page right now. Moving on up to Canada, where five major news outlets have banded together, formed like Voltron, to launch suit against OpenAI. They're accusing the company of illegally using their content to train its AI models. And they're looking for damages and compensation of $20,000 per article, which could potentially total billions. So the media organizations say that OpenAI's data scraping practices violate copyright laws and unfairly profit from their journalistic work. But OpenAI says that their training methods rely on publicly available data arguing compliance with fair use principles. So this is the latest in a wave of clashes between tech innovators and copyright holders. Gonna be very, very interesting to see how this all shakes out. So get informed on the Wednesday I page and stay tuned for more. Oh, but the legal troubles don't stop there for OpenAI. No, no, Elon Musk has filed a preliminary injunction in U.S. federal court to block OpenAI's transition to a for-profit entity. Musk is saying that OpenAI and its CEO Sam Altman and their major investor Microsoft, they're all accused of anti-competitive practices, including discouraging investments in rival AI firms like Musk's XAI. He also wants to stop OpenAI from any 
benefit that it is receiving from interlocking board members. He's particularly here talking about board members that are on OpenAI, as well as Microsoft's board, with Microsoft having invested almost $14 billion in OpenAI at this point. He's talking about Reid Hoffman. He's talking about Dee Templeton there, uh, though Reid Hoffman is the only voting member on Microsoft's board. Uh, also, the companies, he says, Microsoft and OpenAI, they've already professed themselves to be competitors. So he said that's the monopolistic problem. That's the anti-competitive harm that he foresees. So Musk is saying that OpenAI's restructuring violates their original nonprofit mission and leverages Musk's early contributions to create an AI monopoly. OpenAI says that the transition complies with all legal standards and supports innovation. So this clash shows that the battle is intensifying over dominance in the lucrative AI market. Hot topic right here. We're going to follow it all the way to the end. So stay tuned for more. And OpenAI's bad week still isn't over. You might have heard the news because it was huge when a group of artists leaked the Sora video AI tool claiming it was a retaliatory measure because the company exploited them for unpaid work and manipulated their feedback on the tool to favor the company's PR goals. Check out this clip. And right at the top, it says, after three hours, OpenAI shut down Sora's early access temporarily for all artists. Now, unfortunately, none of this stuff works anymore, but it looks like it did at least for a few hours. Now, if we click right here, it says, open letter, why are we doing this? What I believe they're saying is, OpenAI is trying to convince the world that Sora is another tool for artists to create, where what they're seeing is Sora is actually taking artists' work and is able to then essentially replace artists in the future. So the leak briefly allowed the public to access Sora, which was wild. I was on X when it was all going down. So you had people coming on X to show off what they made with Sora. Everybody started thinking that they had just like sneak released it without telling anybody. So everybody rushed to go try it, but crashed the site and everybody's confused wondering what's going on. And then OpenAI, of course, shut it all down real fast. And for their part, they're insisting their position is like, hey, dude, nobody twisted your arm and forced you to take part in our unreleased alpha program. So <laughs> OpenAI is confident that they're on sure footing with this. But at the same time, this highlights another area of growing tension around the intersection of technology and creativity where the human and the tech meet. Let's see what happens with this and let's see when Sora is finally going to come out, if ever. Have you ever wanted to launch a podcast but avoid the dirty work of writing it, producing it, recording it? Well, your friends at Eleven Labs, the voice cloning trailblazer, they've got you covered. They just launched Gen FM. It's a new feature in its Eleven Reader iOS app that transforms your user uploaded content like PDFs, articles, ebooks, and YouTube videos, turns all of that into AI generated podcasts featuring two synthetic co hosts. Okay, so today I'm going to be looking into this text to podcast model, which uh, yeah seems quite interesting. I'm going to train it on a book that I wrote earlier this year. Stoicism, an ancient okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, I can hear the podcast it now. I can hear Will's voice, and there's also another guy called Charlie. His voice sounds different as well. Cool. This is pretty sweet. So they say that Gen FM is going to mimic natural conversations by incorporating human elements like pauses, ums, laughter, and even breathing. They're going to position Gen FM as a competitor to Google's Notebook LM, which offers a similar AI-driven dialogue generation, but they plan to enhance Gen FM with more customization options and the ability to combine multiple sources for a richer podcast content experience. Now, for businesses and entrepreneurs, this is huge in terms of reducing the cost and time involved in creating highly consumable content to promote your business, your brand, or even yourself as a thought leader or innovator. Now, if any of you are going to use this 11 Labs tool to create a podcast and you want to have me on as a guest, go ahead and clone my voice, have me on as your first guest, and let's see how your episode comes out. I can't wait to hear it.
movie exhibition giant IMAX, pun half intended, is leveraging AI to make its original content more globally accessible. So here's what's happening. And they're teaming up with a Dubai-based startup called Cam.ai in a partnership that's going to use their AI-driven dub studio platform to translate and localize their original content, including their vast library of documentaries, into 140 languages. The entertainment market is projected to hit $3.4 trillion in 2025, driven in part by a shift toward diverse linguistic content. So the business takeaways here are two. On the one hand, we're talking about IMAX stepping up to a quickly growing international worldwide demand for content that's in languages other than English. And on the other hand, we're showcasing AI's growing role in the translation and localization market offering a cheaper alternative to traditional translation methods. Huge story here. Can't wait to see what comes of it. And we will follow this story. Get all the details on the Wednesday I page right now. Now it's time for the videos of the week and we're kicking things off, not with a narrative film, but with a showcase of the latest AI video tool. In the time that I've been doing this show, we've seen the state of the art revolutionized multiple times over. We saw the Sora announcement, then it was Dream Machine, then it was Kling, then it was Hailuo, now it's Hunyun, the video app out of China. Check out what it's capable of with these officially released clips right here. Screaming dreams are coming true. Hunyun brings something new. Open source from a distant land. A revolution at our hand Why is the best from miles away When North America led the way Now we see what we can build With this tech our vision's filled Now, as the holiday season approaches, I love seeing the holiday-themed content come out. Check this out. This one made me laugh. The Grinch Stole Christmas and My Beer by Panavision Parodies. Well, it was Christmas in Whoville, and wouldn't you know That green fur ball Grinch is putting on a show Sneaking around the houses, making folks go nuts Stealing all the presents and leaving no guts Oh, that Grinch stole Christmas and my beer Left me wondering what the hell happened here Stealing all our gifts, but the worst of his crime Was taking my six-pack, that's just crossing the line now, for all of the joy and merrymaking that the holidays bring, they can also be a source of stress, as we're going to find out from this film called Stressmas by John Draper. Once there was someone who sought Christmas perfection, but summoned a monster, a stress-born confection. It thrived as they planned, it fed on their fears, grew on overspending and festive cheers. It tangled the lights, misplaced all the joy. More gifts, bigger feasts, don't forget the toy. Christmas became a monstrous delight, a beast made of pressure night after night. But here lies the truth, there's no need to impress. The monster only grows when we feed it as stress. The magic's in laughter, in socks that don't match, in quiet warm moments that nothing can snatch. Forget perfect presents, savor what's near, let's tame the stress monster and treasure who's here. And what if you took the Super Mario characters out of the Mushroom Kingdom and into the world of Warhammer? Well, you're going to find out what that's about with Super Mario in the shadow of Warhammer 40k by The Ghost Frame. That's the show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Now, every week, we here at Wednesday I strive to bring you the biggest stories from the world of AI in a concise and entertaining package. But if you want to be the first to know about it, then get on over to the Wednesday I page, sign up for the newsletter, and get it straight into your email inbox. But if you're making something cool with AI, we got a tip, something we got to cover on the show, we want to know about it. Send us the link. We're on X, 
Instagram, LinkedIn, leave a comment on the video, email it to us, or better yet, get somebody at OpenAI to tell us about it. Because I'm certain that they would appreciate a break with all they've got going on right now. Whew. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Fire!